Greetings mortals, I am Nathan, one of the rulers of the underworld, or specifically the ruler of Manga Hell. And today we'll be reacting to the newest chapter of My Academia, chapter 335, titled Endeavor. Well, I suppose it only makes sense that we focus on Endeavor in this chapter. After all, we did just end the storyline between the Hot and the Rocky family, so it makes sense that we have a chapter that's more focused on it, as a, in a way of a conclusion. It's only logical. So yeah, anyways, let's get into this chapter, shall we? So we start off with the, with the first page that's that, you know, very, you know, that's super obvious, supposed to be part of this superhero comics, where we have, like, the way the, the, that comic books have the, the done, done in the corner of the company and an issue and all that, which show to be standing there. And honestly, this looks like a pretty cool thing. I honestly would believe this was a cover in a volume it's, of this volume with this battle in it. I'm guessing this is probably just like what the... Of course, you originally thought it was gonna be the car, but probably just decided to change it. It's also a kind of a nice little parallel to uh, Volume 5, where it's a very similar type of scenario where Todoroki's standing in the middle with his, one of his hands, I think it was the his right hand, I don't know, standing there being all serious and though, as he uses fire and ice, as we actually do see her shoulder's eye, uh, white side being frozen over. So it's a very nice and very logical path. The page. So yeah, now, that, now let's actually cut to the story as we see the conclusion of battle where we see a uh, show to like uh, in the, after the strike at Darby, like we are like, just kind of exhausted as Darby is just kind of they demonically frozen over as as his eyes are gonna be wired out. As then we see Burden on the ground on her hand, hands and knees as she's a bit burnt as she messages messages the or she announces it to the rest of the heroes well to the to the heroes on the in their area as well as the all my name and that those guys that Darby is secured Darby has been captured as she screams the final part out as the next is saying show to subdue Stoya as we see like a wide shot of the Ice and fire, and it seems like a good chunk of the thing. Uh, the air the war in was actually completely burnt to a crisp and frozen over. Now, honestly, I feel like this could be like a giant pool, like you know those uh, pools they have in Zeus for like these big uh, whale, wait for those big aqua creatures. I feel like you could have literally make uh, something like that in this era now. So yeah, anyways, then we cut to uh, some of the battles between some of the. You know, the heroes and villains, whereas a few of the hero, uh, villains were already captured. As there we see uh, some woman, some martial arts looking woman be like, ah, fighting against his own brother must have been so distra distressing. Even so, he managed to win. Yeah, I feel that's a bit of a too obvious thing. Like, this is just some random martial artist. Although, honestly, she kind of does remind me of a thing, a, a hero that was in a movie once. I'm not exactly sure, I'll check it later, but I think this. Chick is actually the same one, which I don't think makes much sense, but hell, I'm not sure exactly. I know it's the sense on here, it's not, especially because what Skid said later in the chapter. But yeah, anyways, then we see somehow he'll be like, that kid, he beat the uh, accursed wielder of blue flames! Shoto! <laughs> Did someone try to replicate it never right now? So yeah, anyways, then we get some of the heroes at the, fighting that giant fat Nomu, as they're like, follow up on Shoto's work, all that remains is this, is this fat ass! So yeah, we see some uh, striking at him and pencils. They seem to be doing pretty well. I mean, one guy's even going to the knee high Nomu's brain as they're starting to strike it down. As I think the Nomu's actually screaming with Gah! So yeah. Then we see a panel where we see some of the villains captured and strained, and some of the heroes are looking up to to the defeated heroes. As we have the heroes saying, "Throw everything we got at him. We've got a numbers advantage." And then we get some other guy who actually feels like he's a reference to something as, he, as he's like telling that woman that was earlier speaking with We got lucky, a lucky draw here. We didn't have to face any of the Tartar's escapees such as Kunaida and Ghostly. I have no idea who that is, but I'm guessing we're gonna get to know them. So yeah, anyways, I guess these escaping Tartar's are like I was expecting still gonna be a thing. 
So we see this panel where we see a few of them. We see one guy, like, having an umbrella and, like, a top hat, who actually seems to be very big big guy. Then we see a guy who's more, like, crouched up, who I'm guessing is what he was referring to, Kunani Glasti. Then we see someone who seems to have, like, a dreadlock type of thing, who I think we actually did see when, they were f when the villains and heroes were first showing up. And then we see another guy who seems to be um, completely covered by these board balloons, who, funny enough, I think that when we first got these escape targets that were, you know, after Deku, I think one of them was completely covered covered to, to the side to a point people thought there were only, like, six of them sent, but I'm, but I'm guessing there actually are seven, but, like, I thought there were seven, and one is now completely covered. Makes me wonder if this uh, seven guy is gonna be, like, a reference, to, an obvious reference to a Spider-Man villain, since, you know, we don't actually have that many obvious references, well, references to the previous, uh, f to villains in Marvel and DC Comics, surprisingly enough. So, yeah. But also, we see, like, two other guys to the side, and I don't think those two figures are supposed to be anything major. I feel like one of them could just be Moonfish, and maybe someone else that I'm forgetting, but I don't think it's gonna be anything. Anyways, then we get that guy who's speaking before, be like, we gotta make sure to share our luck with our colleagues. Those poor bastards have to face the escapees. So yeah, I guess these escapees are actually very high rate powerful. I guess it, what this guy means is that we have to finish this quickly so we can go help them. I mean, we literally have two, only two who are actually threats, and one is already taken down. Let's just finish the final one. So yeah, anyways, then we get Nash saying, The news of Dobby's defeat made its way to Kamino Ward. It's the center of operations where Tsukuruchi and the others we're stationed at. So yeah, anyways, then we get to a shot of All Might as he's like, uh, starting to about to cry as he closes out like, young to the Rocky, Although Midoriya, and then we have Tsukuri saying, Although Midoriya has been sent to a different location, we made a good start so far. You have to be one, the one to tell them, All Might. And then we get like a, the, uh, you know, the little mic. And then we cut to a uh, Jaku Hospital Ruins in front of the Jigato Market Academy facility. Huh, so I guess Jigato Makia wasn't actually a transport anyway, he was just, you know, had a facility built on top of him. I mean, I guess it makes sense, after all, I just, I mean, there was no real way to put him anywhere else. Like, I don't even know how, where would they would put him in Tartarus. But, regardless, we see a bit of a battle here, as we actually see the sludge villain from the first episode also being there. I guess we know where he is at, at, at this point, as they are all striking themselves. As then we have the they're saying the announcement was made across every battlefield. So I guess every facility there there's a battle in, no knows Dobby was defeated. As then we see uh, where some of the students were, from namely from class one A and one B, with Mina, Minata, the, sh the 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 two girls that were with Monoma's team doing the stupid uh, class one A versus class one B, as well as Mudman there as well. As then we have uh, G we see that Monday was also there and apparently her next final battle. As then she like stumps through some villains as she screams, He was always struggling with his quirks, I was worried about him. Looks like he's got some skills, I like his flair. I was surprised that was perfectly planned, so what are these guys doing here? I'm gonna say also the villains speaking because you know they were because this whole because this is clearly just supposed to be a different facility. They, and this was not on plan list. So yeah, anyways, then we see uh oh. A very familiar face from these villains was striking. As this villain starts speaking, you rats made it look like you were on your last legs, when in reality you had hundreds of heroes on the wings spread throughout the whole area. From the looks of it, you even anticipated the simultaneous deployment of these detached force. However, your sacrifice will be in vain. As we get a close up of this villain, as we as we could have guessed, is he's the villain that killed Midnight. And in case any of you are questioning, he literally says that in the next panels. And um, quoting him, the time of liberation is upon us. These that th those that speak lies will be ruined now into ground. Just like that UA teacher, as we get a shot of Midnight. As we see then see Amina hear that. And realizing, oh, this guy was the one who killed her. So yeah, this villain is actually going to be doing something. He's not just going to be some random nameless liberation soldier like the rest of us so far. So yeah, pretty 
be great to see. And honestly, I feel like it does make sense that he would be a bit more major. So anyways, then we see Kirishima showing up, so he was there as well. It's like, sorry I'm late. And he was like, Red Riot? And then, uh, should I be like, the area's been properly evacuated, Pinky. Everyone else, let's do this. I'm guessing what Kirishima is referring here is referring to the people who are just like in charge of watching over the Giganto Machia who aren't fighters. But yeah. Also, the whole uh, hero still being around thing, I feel like this is one of those things that is the, the problem because of the whole, uh, you know, the whole speed pace being a bit too quickly. So, this, so we, we are stuck with this. Maybe what it's referred to that all these heroes were actually with Giganto Machia and maybe someone else training and maybe recruiting or something. And if that lady previously is any consideration, it's possible that she was like, also one of the heroes from other countries that came, but just it wasn't, like, they were similar to uh, uh, Star and Shop, they kind of went on their own type of thing. So yeah, anyways, then we see uh, Kirishima saying, Todoroki showed us how many he wa really was, now it's time to do our part! A friend to protect Injiga to Makia, which I'm not exactly sure if that's gonna work. I feel like it might, but it could just end up differently. Anyways, then we get to uh, Taka, Takoba National Station, which I am not exactly remembered we ever were in this area, but I'm assuming we were. And then we see a Sato Jiro, and I think that one with the ice, with the uh, solid air quirk, uh, as we have started saying, when this bell is done, no dust it, we ought to congratulate him properly. So yeah, I guess I got to congratulate Todoroki. Let's hope that's not a red flag here. Yeah? Anyways, then we see Ojiro be like, despite the fact he told us the gap between Darby and himself was far too big. So yeah. Which, to be fair, Darby was extremely powerful. Like, I feel like the only reason why Shoto even won, in fact, it was pretty much saying in the last chapter that the only reason why Darby lost to Shoto was because Burnen, Kido, and that other guy were, took the hit, hit for Shoto. So it's more like, like uh, so maybe he just so Dob showed to maybe exaggerate the gap, but he was right that he could have very easily lost there. So yeah, anyways, then we see Sarah who is speaking to himself, self, which we actually don't get a close up of him. We just see the helmet, which makes me wonder what th this is all about because Hikoshi actually did state that he has a big, he's planning a big moment with Sarah, but so far we haven't gotten anything, and I don't really see how this is gonna be. Like anything big, like maybe there's gonna be something with Izuku or something, but I'm not exactly sure. Then we got to, to the sky, UA High School building, as we see uh, the battlefield with Shirokis, and then we just have, but unfortunately, we only just have, we only get uh, Bakugo saying, of course he won that Todoroki, as he's kind of grinning. As then we see a bit of just, also while we are seeing the building, we also see a bit destroying all over the place. So I guess these are just the hands or the physical strength from Shigaraki destroying it. It's again very quick. So anyways, then we come to the area where they initially ambushed the villains or where, you know, it was reportedly supposed to have been uh, Izuku getting captured by Ophelon and all that. As then we see like, on that, we see Fat Gum in front while Ayama's behind him. As then we see like a few heroes and villains clashing. As one of them seems to may have been... Ish Seems to be a uh, rubber ball? I don't think so. I think it's supposed to be something else, but I know it just resembles him. As then we see like a few heroes, I think a few heroes impaled by something that look like black flowers. As then we see one villain who is actually the, the villain that they were talking about beforehand, who is sitting on a bunch of flowers, that, like saying to him, saying, so that cage from before was only meant to allow for both forces to be split up, and those people were matched according to their quirks. So what's the deal with this particular location then? Hmm. Uh, so I guess he's one of those kill villains who has to to sit or kind of has to sit down and actually think about the whole situation, like not just think about it quickly in his head, like he has to say it aloud. It's like. I wonder what spurred you all to remain here. Is it trust or just blind faith? It is what you cannot see that you must fear. The very layer oh, that covers this planet. I feel like this character has, will have a bit of a different 
dialogue in the official translations, but yeah. So this guy is, uh, says, basically he's trying to rationalize what's going on here. And according to him, he thinks that the only reason they're still there here is probably because of blind faith in the odds to be able to beat the other groups of villains and get here. But it, which is my assumption, which makes me think that maybe all of those escaped TARDIS and prisoners are here, but I feel like it would not make much sense if they were about them to have them all in one area. I feel like it makes sense to have them in different areas, especially if they are any kind of field users. So yeah, anyways, as for this guy, this guy has like that weird eye thing where his lens, his eyes are like black, while there's something other color in it in his, for the pupils. So yeah, as that's why he's like also very like hooded. He has like this weird hair where it's kind of like braided halfway. Like he, the very tips of it seem to be braided, while everything behind it looks normal. Which right now is the similar kind of thing that he has in his uh, clothing style. And yeah, this guy looks. Very weird and creepy. Honestly, I do actually see why he would be like one of the high ranking escapees. I mean, Dictor just looked like a very basic design, honestly. So, yeah, anyways, then we have Fat gonna be like, The hell are you talking about? You an alien or something? This planet? Which is kind of true. I mean, he did say it in a very weird way. Although, to be fair, it could just be he's a, a dra drama queen. But, anyways, then we have this guy saying, I mean, I'm waiting your options. Until now, there have been no men who deceived him and live to tell the tale. You shall be no exception. As we see a shot of Oyama, and I'm guessing this guy is gonna be Fat Gum and Oyama's opponent. So, yeah. Honestly, Escape Prison of, of Tata seems like a pretty good villain to be fighting. So, anyways, then we have this guy. And also, this guy seems to actually know more about. All for one, then we give him credit for because of the fact he's so upset and live to tell the tale with no exceptions. So it makes me kind of wonder that front. I guess I do one of these escapees of people that all for one already had context where he's just they were defeated before they could, you know, come into bigger play or something. We'll see. So, anyways, then we see uh, this guy Star Cup being taught with jailbreaker Kunaidi I Kunaida. Huh, Kunaida. Isn't there supposed to be a ghastly as well there? Maybe Ghastly comes, maybe Ghastly someone else, like maybe some one of the other escapees that we never saw. Although the Ghastly could also be that guy with a gas mask that was with with uh, Mina and talking about how he killed Midnight. But I, I think that would make sense because, you know, that guy was a Liberation soldier, not a, you know, Itadis prisoner. But yeah, anyways, then we, we have Kunaya saying that as the dictator failed, his duties, he did not get a second chance. As all for one's latest lesson, let me show you how the job should be done. So yeah, I do one of those guys. Some guys is gonna get be defeated. Which honestly, I'm not gonna feel like we're gonna have like a chapter or two focusing on defeating all of these remaining jailbreakers. Like I'm guessing it's gonna be something like the first, we're gonna have three, six chapters or so. I might be exaggerating, like a few chapters where we just have them be, these jailbreakers be taken down by a few of class one A. With like the final one, maybe be taken up by Zuko and while well, he's running to Shiraki. But we will see that front. And then we have the Akuna saying, Are you still aiming for the best of both worlds? Or have you made your choice? Oh, Yama Yuga, you are nothing but the bad stock between birds and beasts. And then uh, uh, Ayama's just like, Merci. As I'm guessing he's prepared to fight him because he knows he's gonna die. So yeah. Anyways, then we have, uh, we cut to uh, what looks like to be UA, as uh, present Mike Scrimmage, Shoto has defeated Dobby! As then we have, um, so shining up, uh, saying, up against the cruel, well face of destiny, Toki still faced it head on and stood his ground. As then we see Shoto to holding Koda as they are jumping out of the way of a giant spinner with a giant fucking makeshift bunch of swords sticking together sword as he seems to have destroyed what looks to be stairs with a single strike. Which should be very not the most impressive thing, but considering this is just a bunch of a random swords being stuck together, it rather really is. And to be fair, but those of things don't seem to be steel there, so yeah. And then we have Spinner uh thinking his eyes actually wired out as he's like Dabby last 
And then we got, got a close-up with his eyes, so we actually do, we see that he still has pupils and some cells in it. It's like, impossible! This is just propaganda to boost morale! He couldn't have! Which is, let's be real here, for a villain's perspective, it's kind of true. I mean, how do they know that he won? Like, there's no way you can actually prove it to the villains here, so... Someone like Spinner to be in denial does make sense. Even though it is technically true that Dobby did lose. So anyways, then we get a little bit of a flashback as we see Dobby saying, No chance in hell! As then we see uh, all for one be in front of them. I guess this is where all for one offered the quirks, uh, offered some quirks to them, but Dobby refused. As we and I'm guessing Dobby also didn't take any. As we see, just Spinner there standing. As then Spinner's looking at Dobby, he's like, he has everything, a purpose in life, a goal, power, and what do I have in comparison to him? As then we see uh, all for one's hand are going over Spinner's mouth, as I'm guessing he's going to start giving him quirks. As then we see Spinner now screaming, ah, nothing! Well, not screaming nothing, just he's thinking of some nothing! Which I actually do like how there's like nothing in it, in his mouth. Like, he's basically screaming at it, but not actually. Well, but what he's actually saying when I was like, There is absolutely no way that someone with his tenacity would ever lose! I mean, to be fair, Spirit, Dobby did lose to Gran Torino in their your first attack, so that was a surprise attack, but still, he did lose. Anyways, then we have Spinner screaming with his sword, so, pose, saying that people with his swords pointing there, he's like, Get Kogre back to his cop! From his captors, destroy the status quo. As we see some of the mute, some of the some of the mutants that are with him, as well as the two leaders, the guy that was with the gas guy who killed Midnight, and the other girl that was in his squad. As then we see Spider Man screaming, "Do it for me!" And Shigaraki saying, "Tear down everything that oppressed this persecution, persecuted that uh, that and persecuted us." So yeah. Now, since Spinner has quirks, now I do wonder if this gentrification type of quirk it, it is the only one, or if Spinner has more. It's just that he hasn't shown us yet. Because remember, this like, so far it just seems to be gentrific gentrification, but there's possibility of having more. For example, it's actually a good thing that I have this, is that in volume 29, we're actually gonna confirm what quirks uh, Gigantomachia had, and just Gigantification is actually the third quirk that he got, if the numbers are accurate to uh, when they, he got them. And it's actually explained this in this as well that Gigantomachia had to get like a lot of very simple quirks that could just you now you can learn them quickly and you don't have to think about much. So Spinner could very likely have a bunch of these quirks and very similar ones. Although I'm not, I don't think it's gonna be like exactly the same. Just maybe a few of them are gonna be parallel, like this gentrification that he has right now. No, so that's also interesting. I should mention is that gentrification is actually explained that this quirk and number two actually do require a thought and some time to learn. And Spinner has it right now, so it's possible that Spinner will every time we cut back to him get more and more abilities and more quirks to use to. It's just now he's very limited because he. I'm guessing we had like a few days of preparation before this. Maybe literally while they were moving to UA. So, yeah, Spinner is right now, uh, let's, so I feel like it's best they take down Spinner right now because who knows what kind of quirks he has up to his sleeve that he just needs some time to learn and, and to use properly right now. If you wonder if we're gonna get like a Mirio versus Spinner kind of fight here because you know we haven't seen me here yet but anyways there we see total rock uh we see soji there look at him as he is like thinking to himself Todoroki, i'm proud that i get to be in the same class as you well they are really kind of saying a lot of good stuff about bravo show to this chapter huh even though uh, this chapter started that but you think there'll be a little more but i don't really know kind of makes me want to worry Anyways, then we cut back to the battlefield between Shoto and Dobby as we see a bunch of the wreckage, which honestly I feel like just changes every time we cut to it. As then we see Ida there, as he removed like the, the top half of his helmet. As then we have Shoto saying, I stole your engines, didn't I? I'm sorry. 
as there we have a battle where I do wonder if this is supposed to have been actually uh, some cut by time lack of odd because there's literally just like a bunch of captains there and everything else is completely white. Or that could just be some ball like representing or something, I don't know really. As there we have Ida just saying, why are you apologizing? As then we see uh, Dobby as one of the heroes is like arresting a uh, can coffee him as he's like, why is he still alive? As he's saying like completely scared, like, why is he still alive? <laughs> Which is kind of true. I mean, Dobby is literally had blue flames coming from his mouth, meaning that his blue flames were very close to his fucking heart. I mean, this isn't like some... And Dobby is like one of those animals that, you know, can spur fire from his mouth. Like, Dobby's fire comes from his hands and his feet, if I remember correctly. So, him having it from his mouth is clearly just supposed to be damage. And not even mention the fact he's supposed to be weakened to his own fire. So, yeah, that's not a good thing in any sense. So, I guess they get a shot of Dobby's chest as we get closer up to it. As then we see. Oh my god, actually, I think we see Dobby's flat. We see Dobby's flashing himself completely ripped itself apart to a point we can actually see the insides of it. I mean, granted, it's completely dark, so it's not like we see the gory stuff, but still, I, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be his flash here. Anyways, then we see a close up, is we see like a little beam of light. Like a very tiny one. It's different to say what's like a very tiny insignificant kind of beam. Will probably be the noise. Oh, uh, well, that's not concerning at all. Anyways, then we uh, cut to unexpectedly the news reach even farther. As we see Gunga Mountain Resort, as we see like a, the, where the main battle between all for one and ever and all that are. As we see like a bunch of heroes and events clashing and destroying random stuff, it's too big to tell. And then we see uh, finally we get to see Endeavor in this chapter, chapter titled Endeavor. Um, I don't think there's gonna be a different name when, when the officials come out. But yeah, anyways, we get a close up as we see him. Well, he kinda. That's, I'm not sure, he's sure what face he has right now. As even Old One's like not sure exactly what kind of expression he goes. It's just we see Endeavor and he's not like angry, happy, or just like he's just his dad and he's like processing in his mind. As Old One, while he's just flying, is like, what's with that face? Is that relief? Sorrow? As they have hopped back, here it comes! Don't listen to him, Endeavor! So I'm guessing now, uh, all of us gonna take this time to get, play some mind tricks with Endeavor, which makes sense, because in the situation. As there we have, uh, with, uh, uh, all for one's time to speak for the final page in the chapter, is like, as Endeavor listens to it, as all for one says, not even looking Toy in the eyes and just letting Little Show to deal with him. What's your plan, right? And how you are going to justify your actions by saying something like, A hero has a lot to protect. I find out, I think that was something that was said around the same time where Shoto's decision came to. I can't remember exactly what this, what the exact words were, and I'm pretty sure these weren't the ones. But it's actually something I think was said beforehand. So yeah, all for one is like not even is pretty much if he read enough manga and comic books to tell what the explanation is gonna be for the heroes. Anyways, they have to be like, he's already begun the verbal assault, the true threat of every villain. It's the verbal assault. As then we have all for one for the final panel of the chapter, be like. That's why you can't win number one as he puts his hand above him as we see one finger one finger turning into a bunch of drills, one finger seemingly getting some fire. I don't think it's blue fire, but I think it's just regular fire. Some one finger getting what well, I can I feel like they are wind scythes, so just scythes kind of thing. One finger getting some kind of weird bursting open with some kind of weird creature, living creature by the looks of things popping out? Was my fear about that villain that escaping from Tartar as being, having some kind of m multiple, some kind of twice-like quirk accurate? Because there's like literally like a little person coming out and screaming by the looks of things. 
and one finger becoming some kind of goo, like black liquid type of thing. If I had to guess, drill, fire, wind, uh, poison, poison, and uh, another little um, puppet to can fight with. As then we have the end of the chapter, Nash saying he still remains calm as ever. So yeah, something tells me that little beam of light may be something that people will not very take lightly. Or oh, people should probably start running for the hills, if you know what I mean. Now, what it could be, it's probably gonna be some kind of explosion, if you ask me. I do hear some people say maybe like a W has some kind of Phoenix abilities, but I'm not exactly sure. I feel like it's very likely a bomb of some sorts, which, I mean, to be fair, I think the one that laying a gun had was like very, a uh, very small range. I think it was literally just a, a little around her body. It didn't even kill her, so I'm not exactly sure if that is. But I could see this one with Dobby being like a lot bigger. Like, I I would not be surprised if this bomb that was put in Dobby could actually like, you know, when it blows up, you can actually see it from the entire city. Like, like I wouldn't be surprised. Like, imagine if the next chapter, whenever that thing's gonna blow up, it, it, there's like a giant explosion that everyone can see and notice. And like, everyone just starts screaming, uh, hey, Brennan, Brennan! Young Shoto, where are you? And they see the explosion. Or something like that. Now, I'm not exactly sure how they, that would be handled, because then they'll have to come up with a way to, you know, shield and all that, and I don't see how they could do it. Like, maybe, maybe, uh, Ida could grab Shoto and run for the, with the fastest he could, and that would be kind of his thing, like, that he saved them or something. I'm not exactly sure. All I know is that it doesn't look good if that's a bomb. And God knows how big it's gonna be. Which, you know, actually... Alright, tell me something that comes below. If Shoto and Ida and a bunch of the heroes there die because of this explosion, how would you feel if, like, say, in the oh, half of class when they gets killed? And not just the small ones, I mean the big ones like Shoto right now. How would you feel about that? If that happened, I really hope you tell me in the comments below what do you people think about it. Because I kind of feel like this is where we could kind of go, kind of eye for an eye type of situation here. And I think that would actually make sense, but I'm not exactly like, sure. But yeah. Anyways, I hope you like this reaction. I hope you leave a like in the like and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all of you mortals next time. Goodbye.